So in this video, we're gonna be going over the topic of creating a Facebook bot again. So the reason we're gonna go over this again is because we're gonna be using different services to what we used last time. And the new services that we're gonna use are gonna allow us to create a much better, more advanced, more useful bot. So I installed the bot on the How Code Facebook page. So you can see here, if I say hi, the bot replies with the word greetings and there's a hyphen and then the letters HB. That stands for hi bot. That's how you know that this was a response from the computer as opposed to a person. So I can say hello and I get an instant reply from the bot. I can then ask it another question. I can say, what can you do? And the bot replies to me and tells me I can do lots of things. So one thing that the bot can do is it can reach out to APIs on the internet and retrieve data. So at the moment, all it does is it goes out to YouTube and it retrieves the latest high code video. So if I said, what should I watch? And now if I hit enter, you can see the bot replied and it sent me the latest video on the high code YouTube channel. And if I click on that, it lets me watch the video. So this is just a really simple example of what you can do, but I'm gonna be making this bot more advanced over time so that it gets more useful on the high code page. But for this video, we're gonna be learning how to create this really simple version of it. So the reason we're doing it again is because we're gonna use Dialogflow to handle all of our artificial intelligence for our bot. What's really cool about Dialogflow is we can click on integrations and we can really easily make our bot work with Facebook, make it work with just a website, or we can make it work with any of these different services. So Dialogflow is gonna do all of our artificial intelligence, but we're gonna use Firebase to host our bot Firebase is also run by Google and we're gonna use Firebase because it makes it really easy to host the back end of our bot, sort of the brains of it, and it makes it really cheap as well. So the first thing we have to do is install Firebase onto our computer. So what you have to do is just go to this page. I'll have a link in the description, scroll down, and you wanna run this command, npm install Firebase tools. So to run this command, you have to have npm installed and you have to have Node.js installed as it says here. They're really easy to install. You see here, you can go to the Node.js website and you can download Node and npm. So install Firebase and then create a folder for your project project and then run the Firebase init command. So here is the folder for our project. It's called Howbot and this was all created whenever I ran Firebase init. So here I'm back in the root directory and I'm just gonna run Firebase init. So Firebase has database services and it has functions. Functions let us run tiny bits of code without having to run a server. So whenever the bot wants to do something, it can run that code and we don't have to maintain a server. We just upload our code to Firebase. So what you do is you press space to select functions and you're gonna hit enter and it's gonna create your project. So after you've created your project, you wanna to go to Dialogflow and you want to link that with your Google account. That's how you create a Dialogflow account. So Dialogflow has what are called intents. So that's when somebody asks our bot a question, they give it an intent and our bot responds. So the default intent, if we click on that, we can scroll down and we can see this is what the bot will say if it is asked a question, it doesn't know how to answer. Here are all the responses and I can add more responses if I want. The default welcome one is what we already saw. If somebody says hello, the bot will respond with any of these greetings. The next thing I asked the bot was what can you do? And the bot responded with, I can do lots of things. And the other response it has is you'd be surprised. And here is the training data that the bot uses to sort of understand the question. So the more training data we give it, the better our bot will be. And finally, we have the choose a video intent. So when somebody says, what should I watch or pick me a video, the bot will respond with this video here. So how does it work? How does it get the video? So what it does is we enable a webhook call that means for this intent, whenever the bot tries to answer the question, it doesn't know how to answer it. So it has to go off to Firebase, which is here, and it calls our Firebase function. And we'll learn more about those in a minute. So the Firebase function replies, and this is what it replies with. That's how we get that answer. This allows us to also hook into any number of APIs that we want to get relevant data and give it to our bot. So if we go to fulfillment, that's what they call it whenever you try to use a webhook. So you can use a webhook and host it wherever you want, or you can use Firebase. So initially there's something called the inline editor. This is sort of like a block of code inside of Dialogflow that you can edit and that will be your function. But that's kind of limited in what it lets you do. That's why I modified it outside of the editor. That's why you're getting this error. So what you need to do the first time you get here is you click enabled. That will enable the function and you'll scroll down here and there'll be a button called deploy. So you click that button and it'll deploy some code to Firebase's cloud functions. So you can do that and you can test the bot out and you can see how the webhooks work. But what we're gonna do is upload it using the Firebase command line interface because that allows us to add dependencies to our function. Because to be able to call an external API, we need to send some, we need to send a request off to a remote server. To do that, we need some external libraries. So in our functions, we want to go into this functions folder and here is the code for the high code bot. So we'll include this in a link in the description, but here is the library that we needed to include. It's called request. So to install that library, you just simply say npm install request 
that'll install the library and it'll go to our package.json and it will add this dependency. So if we scroll down, most of this is stuff that was generated by Dialogflow. But if we scroll down, we can see this input choose video. So if I go back to intents and I go to choose video, you could see we have this line here called input choose video. This is where we get the name of the function we want to run and we've called our function input.chooseVideo. So what we do is we give it our API key for YouTube that allows us to access the YouTube API. And then we have the URL to the API here and we can see that here. This is just the exact same address. So we're going to this address and we're going to go to the items array in our JSON and we're just going to grab the first item. So we go to items then we go to snippet and then we grab this first one here and that's where we get the video from. So what we do is we send our request to this URL and that's what we do here when we run this function called req. We pass it the URL of the API and in here we say if there's no error and the response code is 200 that means the HTTP request was successful. Then here is our response. It's called object. And then we go to object.items, that's this part here. And here we build our response. So we say, if the platform we're sending to is Facebook, we're gonna create a card. That is what we call this sort of block here. And we go to items, we access the first item. So we're gonna access the first video, then we're gonna go to snippet, which is in here. And then we're gonna go to title, description, and thumbnails to get the picture for the video as well. And then finally, we're gonna have a link to watch the video. And then finally, what we do is we send the response back to the user. This is what sends the response to the bot and that is how it shows up in this window. So you'll see we're using the YouTube API and we have an API key so we need to generate that the first time we do this. So you want to go to cloud.google.com and create an account that will let you use the Google Cloud platform. Then what you want to do is create a project. You just go up here and, and click create to create your project and then what we want to do is we want to scroll down to APIs and services. This is the same for using any Google API. We want to go to library and here is where we can pick an API. So I'm just going to type in the word YouTube. Here's YouTube Data API version 3. And if this is the first time you've used it, you want to just click Enable API and then you'll see what I can see here. So next what you want to do is go to credentials and you want to click create credentials API key and this will create a new API key. And I copy and paste that API key into here and that's how I access the YouTube data API. So next what I have to do is I need to upload all of this code to Firebase so that the bot can actually use it. So to do that it's really simple. After we run Firebase init it's going to go through all of the authentication and things like that. It's, it's very simple. It tells you exactly what you need to do. So assuming that's set up correctly you just type in Firebase deploy and hit enter. So you can see that has uploaded our code to Firebase and you'll see the function here in our Firebase console. So back in Dialogflow, that's all we need to do because since Dialogflow is run by Google, when we create a Dialogflow project, it created a Firebase project for us. So the Firebase project and the Dialogflow project will be created and linked together. So that's all the work we need to do. The final thing left to do is to go to Facebook. So we create a new app. We give it a name, we give it a contact email address. So when you create your app, you're gonna see a screen like this and you wanna click on Messenger. I can't see it anymore because I've already enabled it, but you wanna click set up on the Messenger one that you can see here. And when we click on that, it takes us to this screen. You wanna generate a page access token. So you have to have a Facebook page as well for this to work. So you select your page from this list and it will give you an access token. Then what you wanna do is you want to enable webhooks. So the first time you do this, you're gonna to have to click set up in the corner over here and you're gonna to have to go to integrations, go to settings over Facebook Messenger and you're gonna to have to give it a callback URL, a verify token and a page access token. And you get those all from Facebook. So this is very similar to the other bots we created. And then what you wanna do is you want to tick the messages box. You want to subscribe to messages events. And finally, what you want to do is you want to subscribe your page to this webhooks events. So I subscribed how code to it. And after I did that, that was everything done. So if I went to the how code page now and I tried to message it and I said, hello world, you can see the bot replies. And that was literally everything we needed to do. One last thing you might want to do in Firebase, you want to click modify over your plan and you want to click on the Blaze plan. It's a pay as you go plan, which is extremely cheap because you only pay for what you use. And you want to enable this to allow your bot to speak to external APIs on the internet. If you're only on the free plan, your functions won't have internet access. So that's it for this video. If you want to see more of these sort of videos, just let me know. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. But that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.